Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel, your home for crypto news. What a big day for the crypto market. Coin market cap got hacked, it appears, and a lot of us became billionaires and trillionaires <laughs> in a matter of minutes. I want to share some details there. We also have huge investment news. Nidig, that name I kept telling you guys to pay attention to, they just raised $1 billion, guys. And that money is going to be used to build out the Bitcoin crypto ecosystem. This is huge. I'm going to break down the details for you and what many institutional investors are saying. We're also going to talk about Robinhood and a big crypto technology merger that is coming up very soon, which I think is very bullish. In addition, Elon Musk tweets out that uh, Tesla is going to accept Doge for different types of merch. This is interesting. Could uh, Bitcoin be next? Could other cryptocurrencies be next? You know, we'll talk a bit about that. I'll share his tweet. And the XRP or the SEC Ripple lawsuit about over XRP is going to get some big exposure on a major podcast. Uh, Attorney John Deaton is going to be on that podcast. So I want to share the details with you guys. Before we get to it, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, this video is brought to you by Algorand, which is building the future of finance. Algorand is one of the leading blockchain projects in the crypto industry. They're combining decentralized technology with traditional financial models to build that future of finance. And they're getting adoption across the board from the city of Miami, using them to track uh, air quality from borderless capital, building their $500 million fund to build out the ecosystem for Algorand. Both Anthony Scaramucci and Michael Arrington have invested hundreds of millions of dollars. And central banks are looking to build their CBDCs on uh, Algorand. They are also working on scaling to 10,000 transactions per second. So I'm very bullish on Algorand. Uh, that is why I selected them to be the official sponsor of the Thinking Crypto channel. Um, obviously, I had other sponsors who were interested, but I said, you know what? I'm going to go with Algorand. I hold the token. I earn rewards holding the token. So I'm very bullish on this uh, blockchain project. I believe it will be one of the winners coming out of the crypto market. So if you would like to learn more about Algorand, please visit Algorand.com. All right, coin market cap was a bit drunk today. <laughs> the prices were off the charts, literally. Uh, let me show you this screenshot. Look at this. I never even heard of this uh, crypto, BCX, but it gained the number one spot. Bitcoin had a price of uh, $799 billion, <laughs> Ethereum $42 billion, and so on and so forth. XRP had a price of... 21 million dollars <laughs> and i was a multi-trillionaire guys <laughs> when you add it all up and i'm sure many of you became billionaires and trillionaires as well well apparently coin market cap got got hacked and uh that's what happened or maybe they had some sort of glitch but they haven't released any information yet but it was fun while it lasted and if you look at some of my tweets you know just my portfolio here on one exchange you see here it's over three hundred and fifty nine billion dollars. Uh, you know, I, I I just imagined I bought an island and, and like ten Lamborghinis and so forth. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I, that's that's not what I want to do with my money when I uh, make the 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 supposed or, or you know potentially millions off my crypto holdings. All right, um, Bitcoin's price not nothing much happening. We're still in a holding, moving sideways pattern. Let's see how this week goes. So I don't want to spend too much time on the weekly chart here, but just letting you guys know, we just got to be patient. Now, I did want to share this macro level chart from TechDev, who's a great uh, analyst. And he said the following, calling bear markets with extreme negative market sentiment after Bitcoin rejects near the 1.618 and bounces near the 1.472 is not new. So you're talking about the Fibonacci here. Um, usually in this respective pullback at, at the one, uh, the rejection near the 1.618, people get bearish. Oh my God, we're going to a bear market. It's over, no more bull run, yada, yada. Um, he's saying, no, look, historically, same thing happened. Huge correction. We had red candles, people turned bearish. As I've been saying, I don't think we've hit the blow off top yet. I believe this thing is extending into next year. And we will see a blow off top and then go into a bear market. I'm not denying that's going to happen. I just don't think we've hit that yet. I don't think true mania phase 
is here yet. And I've listed many reasons. Uh, for example, where is the alt season uh, that usually follows Bitcoin's demise after a blow off top, right? It hasn't happened. So uh, there's multiple factors, but just sharing some quick thoughts here. So I'm personally hodling um, and uh, buying the dips where I can, not financial or investment advice, do your own research. I'm just letting you know what I'm doing. All right, here's the big news, guys. And this is very bullish. So Nidig, which has huge Wall Street connection, the, the connections, this is a big time institutional players, has connections to Ben Losky. Many of you who know about him and the bit license in New York. And uh, he was with Ripple at one point. Uh, this is the top tier of their Wall Street players. And look at what they tweeted. This year has brought tremendous growth for us, and we're grateful for the continued support of our investors and partners. Our latest growth equity funding round will help advance our efforts in bridging the gap between traditional finance and Bitcoin, and they have raised $1 billion. Talk about a funding round. $1 billion, guys, to build out Bitcoin and crypto ecosystem. Think about that. Uh, this is very bullish. And th this is, uh, you know, what they posted on their website. So NYDIG announces $1 billion funding round. The raise led by West Capital will accelerate growth and further NYDIG's mission of Bitcoin for all. Let me read some of the names who participated in this. So once again, led by West Cap with participation from prior leads, Bessemer Venture Partners and FinTech Collective, as well as strategic partners and existing investors, Affirm, FIS, FinServe, Mass Mutual, Morgan Stanley, and New York Life. See who's backing this thing, guys? This is why I, I, I've been saying for a long time, pay attention because we, when you see the moves these people are making, they're not making small moves. These, these are the whales. These are the heavy hitters. And they're setting up shop putting their stake in the ground, and it's a big freaking stake, right? And they're bringing lots of capital to build out the, uh, the this crypto market. And people who are still on the fence about crypto, when you see things like this, this should make you bullish. Um, this, is, this is not a joke. This is not a fad. This is not some small time, a couple hundred thousand, couple hundred million dollar uh, movements. This, these are big time players. So the capital will be used to further develop NYDIG's institutional grade Bitcoin platform using recent upgrades to the Bitcoin protocol with capabilities such as Bitcoin and Lightning payments, asset tokenization, and smart contracts. That's interesting. Looks like they're going to be using some smart contract technology for Bitcoin. I wonder what it is. I would certainly want to see that. So the prospects for both NYDIG and Bitcoin have never been mo more exciting, said Robert Gutman, co-founder and CEO of NYDIG. I'm going to try to get an interview with him. A roster of partnerships and strategic investors lays the foundation for NYDIG to become the leading provider of Bitcoin solutions for businesses in any industry. And this new equity capital will further accelerate progress uh, towards making this exciting network as accessible and useful to all. Now, some context. This news we reported on earlier this year. $6 billion NCR opens Bitcoin purchases to 650 banks and credit unions. Well, NCR powers a lot of the point of sale and, and uh, you know the, the, the sale system that when you go to CVS or you go to a restaurant or a store, Many times you'll see that little green sticker or badge that says NCR. They're powering this globally, guys. This is a big, big company. Well, the news was they would be doing this with uh, NYDIG. So let me re read the full context here. 650 U.S. banks will be able to offer Bitcoin purchases to an estimated 24 million total customers as part of the deal between enterprise payments giant NCR and digital asset management firm NYDIG, community banks, including North Carolina-based First Citizens Bank, and credit unions, including Bay Federal Credit Union in California, will be able to offer their clients cryptocurrency trading through mobile applications built by the payments provider. See NYDIG's place in this, guys? This is massive. Uh, I, I don't think people realize how big this is. And, and this news is from earlier this year. And I interviewed 
Tim Vanderham of NCR. He's the uh, CTO there. And we talked about this, guys. So if you haven't seen that interview, I'll put a link in the description. Big things are happening here. Uh, some people who are not familiar with these names are missing how big this is. NCR and NIDIG. And just look at the found funding round NIDIG just got. And who, look who's part of it. Morgan Stanley, Mass Mutual, and so forth. Big time players are part of this. And I'm, like I said, keep an eye on this brand or this company um, because there's a lot of Wall Street capital and funding uh, behind it. Um, look at this. Anthony Scaramucci, who I've interviewed on the channel as well, he says, congratulations to our partners at NIDIG. So it looks like Scaramucci's Skybridge Capital may be invested or somehow working together. Uh, I have a second interview with Anthony uh, lined up for January. Uh, we're going to talk about Algorand and all this news. So big time connections, guys. Uh, Michael Saylor weighed in on this. He said NIDIC has raised $1 billion to accelerate growth and enhance its institutional grade Bitcoin platform to support lightning payments, asset tokenization, and smart contracts. Um, so I think a lot of big time players are recognizing this and a lot of big time players are investing in NIDIC. Uh, all right, let's move ahead. Uh, we see along the lines of what MicroStrategy has been doing of putting Bitcoin in their balance sheet. Well, Life insurance company Lemonade just bought $1 million in Bitcoin for its balance sheet. Remember what I was saying, guys, just even yesterday's video, that it wouldn't surprise me if Tim Cook and Apple changed their minds because of what's happening with the inflation. You know, Tim Cook said, I own Bitcoin and Ethereum, but no plans for Apple. I wouldn't be surprised if they changed their minds literally as they heard the inflation news of inflation as high as it was uh, you know, since 40 years ago. Uh, so the cash they're sitting on is getting debased. And uh, I know they don't want to do that, right? Obviously, they don't want to lose their purchasing power. So they'll want to put not all of it, but some of it into uh, assets that appreciate over time. And like you and I should, right? Because we need to protect our wealth, our, our money, because you just leave it in the bank, you're not earning any type of interest. And it's just losing purchasing power as the years progress. So we're seeing more and more companies are putting Bitcoin in their balance sheet, which is very bullish, my friends. Uh, let's talk about Elon Musk. Well, he tweeted the following today. Tesla will make some merch buyable with Doge and see how it goes. Uh, Elon's a funny guy, man. Uh, I'm still trying to get an interview with him. So a couple of things. Uh, they still hold Bitcoin on their balance sheet, right? And so does SpaceX. Um, they were accepting payments via Bitcoin earlier this year. And then Elon said, well, we're going to stop that because of the uh, renewable energy, um, ESG concerns and all that junk. Um, and now he's saying, hey, we're going to use Doge to accept uh, payment for merch. And, and in fact, the price of Doge saw a spike as a result. So that's the Elon effect. Um, obviously, I don't make investment decisions based on Elon, but... Nevertheless, he has that power as the richest man in the world. And obviously, he was listed as Time Magazine's uh, most influential and you know, all that stuff. But you know, let's see if he decides to open it up back for Bitcoin and possibly other cryptocurrencies. I think that, that, that is certainly down the road because he did say if Bitcoin's mining hit 50% and above renewable energy, he would start accepting Bitcoin again for payments of, for Tesla, at least. So we shall see. Now, look at this news, guys. This is bullish. Cove Markets to join Robinhood Crypto in the latest acquisition. Now, I don't personally use Robinhood for crypto purchase because it doesn't allow you to withdraw. I think that they are working on the feature. But I use you know specific exchanges with low fees, and then I move it off into a hardware wallet. Do I have some crypto on exchanges for swing trades? And you know, if I need to do anything, yes. But the majority of my crypto is sitting on hardware wallets. So here's a quote. We started Cove Markets three years ago to help crypto investors get the most out of their trading experience, said Scott uh, Nudson, if I'm saying that right, CEO and co-founder of Cove Markets. So what you may say, why is this bullish? Well, guys, Look at what's happening. Uh, NIDIG is getting a billion dollar investment. Uh, Robinhood is acquiring Cove Markets. Everybody's setting up shop. They're building massive infrastructure for crypto because they know it's here to stay. 
They know the upside is massive and the adoption is, is still early. We haven't hit mass adoption yet. We're still in that early in that er, uh, uh, S curve of adoption, guys. Um, and I, I see just the, from a business standpoint, all the building, all the partnerships, all the acquisitions, all the investments, it's amazing what's happening. So uh, Cove Markets, an API platform that enables users to trade across multiple centralized exchanges and manage aggregate financial data will become part of Robinhood Crypto as announced by the discount brokerage late uh, Tuesday. Traders and investors can connect up to seven exchanges, including Coinbase Pro, Kraken, Bitfinex, et cetera, using Cove Markets to trade over 50 major currencies and altcoins. Very bullish news. Um, these are the things, the on and off ramps that are being built that will lead to more adoption of crypto and higher prices. Uh, moving ahead, guys. So John Deaton, who um, obviously is representing XRP holders in this Ripple lawsuit or the SEC Ripple lawsuit, he's going to be on Patrick Bet David's um, podcast. I believe it's called Valuetainment, if I'm not mistaken. And I do watch that, uh, his podcast and listen to some of his shows. But more exposure, guys. He's going to be on this. Um, let's see. I think it's airing. Um, Tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow at 9 a.m. live. So be sure to check it out. The great thing about this is giving the lawsuit more visibility, exposing what the SEC did, hurting XRP holders, as well as the entire crypto market, blocking Coinbase lending, uh, going after Terra Luna, right? And we see the Terra Luna founder is suing the SEC. <laughs> um, so be sure to watch this and support it. Uh, John needs our support. And remember, we're all together. It's us against the SEC. Just remember that. Even if you don't hold XRP, it's the crypto market against the SEC. And I guarantee you, Gary Gensler and his cronies, they don't like this. They don't like that they're getting exposed and people are being critical of him, highlighting the, the lawsuit. The more eyeballs on this, the more pressure it will put on politicians and regulars to move and act accordingly. And it's just going to make the SEC look very bad. It's going to put pressure on Gensler to uh, either back off or, or that Congress steps in and does the right thing here. But this is good. We want more exposure. And speaking of um, uh, interviews, guys, earlier today, I uploaded my interview with Jason Foster of uh, Empower Oversight. He's the founder. And they are suing the SEC for not re releasing documents related to uh, FOIA requests regarding the conflicts of interest with Jay Clayton and William Hinman. If you have not seen that interview, please check it out. Link will be in the description. Also, uh, Empower Oversight as a whistleblower and research organization, they're nonprofit. They need donations to operate. So if you can contribute, not saying you have to, but if you can, definitely do, uh, even if it's 10 bucks or something, right? Every little bit helps because uh, it helps fund the, uh, the you know their activities, their research, their legal fees, and so forth from suing like the SEC uh, to make sure we have transparency and accountability in our government, right? Uh, so if you believe in transparency and accountability and, and where your tax dollars are going and these people are supposed to represent us, we need to make sure these type of organizations are well funded and they can do what they need to do. Uh, to make sure things are running according to how they should and, and that the government's doing right by us. So be sure to check it out, guys. Um, they are trying to get as much details as possible on this conflicts of, of interest uh, situation with Jay Clayton and William Hinman. And, and check this out, Patrick Bet David, he actually tweeted out, what do you think will happen to the Ripple case with the SEC hashtag XRP? So uh, I, I think, you know, tomorrow we'll, we'll have a great conversation or, well, John will have a great conversation with Patrick and I'm looking forward to that. So show your support, hit the thumbs up button when you watch it, that video, comment, share it out. Uh, once again, we want to get as much visibility um, around this case because we want Genser to be exposed. We want William Hinman to be exposed and Jay Clayton. Now, if they were doing the right thing, if they were honest, if they were being transparent, we wouldn't have to do this, but we know they're not. And I've said it many times, Genser is a puppet. Uh, he's the banking cartel's puppet, uh, and, and he's not looking to protect retail investors. That, that, that's a that's a facade, you know, he, secretly he's protecting the incumbents, crypto is disrupting them, and he's trying to protect them, which is sad. Um, 
he's he he doesn't he doesn't care if he kills innovation here he doesn't care if xrp holders or crypto holders get hurt he doesn't care because he's not trying to protect you um i'm not saying that be, you know that's not hyperbole because the actions speak louder than the words we're seeing he could he could have thrown out this lawsuit against the sec uh, against ripple excuse me um, even former SEC officials, you know, sent letters to, to Jay Clayton and these folks saying, hey, this is going to hurt uh, XRP holders. And Genser knew about all this um, and he went along with it. So it's it's sad. It's pathetic. Uh, Jay Clayton, William Hinman, Gary Genser should be ashamed of themselves. Uh, it's just really, really, uh, you know, pathetic what, what these guys are doing. Uh, but nevertheless, let's do our part. Make content, tweet, email, phone calls all that stuff. Let's do our part. Watch this interview, support it, blast it out there so we get more people uh, to see what, what is taking place. All right. Finally, David Marcus, who is, of course, leading uh, Facebook's creation of their digital currency and wallet, Novi and, and all that uh, jazz. He tweeted the following today. He said, it's amazing to see significant tech leaders get into the crypto slash Web3 rabbit hole and come out on the other side with bored apes profile pics dot ETH usernames and crypto lingo. What an awesome time to be alive. We are going to make it for sure. So something that was cool today, uh, Shopify CEO did exactly what he's talking about, right? Put on the the the, uh, the, the board A profile pics and the dot ETH uh, handle and so forth. We're just seeing this paradigm shift and cryptos, you know, a lot of people are coming into the crypto industry a lot, lot of them are leaving traditional financial markets and jobs and coming into crypto. It's ama an amazing time. So aside from investing, you know, uh, I hope you guys also look at opportunities for a career. Uh, you know, bring your skill sets into crypto and now will be a great time to enter because we're still early where maybe you get equity in companies, maybe you get some great perks so that as this thing matures and it, it hits, you know, peak, you're, you're benefiting financially and, and in different ways. So certainly take a look at that, guys. I went full crypto. Remember, I announced it earlier this year. I went to work for OKCoin Crypto Exchange, and um, I'm happy I made the move. I, I'm doing full crypto. I'm passionate about crypto. So uh, definitely think about it, guys. It's certainly a big opportunity. Those of you who are maybe still in college listening or whatever it is, or you're looking for a career change, Definitely check out because a lot of crypto companies are hiring. They're, they're looking for talent. So it could be a great time to, once again, negotiate to get some great salary, uh, uh, equity, and so on and so forth. So it's great to see just all these people are now, you know, on board with crypto, bullish on it, bullish on it. And uh, I think the future is bright. And uh, what? let me know what you guys think about this news. Uh, once again, the big news of the day is that NYDIG one billion dollar equity round uh still blows my mind the amount this is not they just they didn't get like 150 million they got a billion dollars <laughs> right i'm thinking of the austin powers uh dr evil one billion dollars right uh exciting times guys leave your thoughts and comments below hit the thumbs up button share this video and i'll talk to you all later